from a slowly recovering economy to stormwater management appeals to the opening of the Luke Jensen Sports Park to establishment of a commission on aging to an upcoming change in the Board of County Commissioners, 2012 was another busy year for Clark County government. Recently, we sat down with Bill Barron, Clark County Administrator, to review last year's highlights for county government and learn what challenges and opportunities lie ahead in 2013 and beyond. Hello, I'm Jim Denwin with Clark County Close-Up. Bill, thank you for meeting with Good us. Good to see you, Jim. Uh, what were some of the biggest accomplishments for Clark County government? Well, we had, a, we had a lot going on this year. We have, I think the biggest one for me was that we got a balanced budget without a tax increase, uh, with no staff or service cuts, and we actually enhanced the general fund. So that was for the next two years, uh, we are fiscally stable, and that was, that was probably the biggest. And um, but reconfiguration, our two-year reconfiguration, uh, second year, second phase of our reconfiguration process, which is trying to meet uh, adjust our service delivery so that we meet our ex, uh, a, our revenue uh, without you know without adjusting ourselves so we're more um, reconfiguring our service delivery. Uh, we continued our fee holiday for the development community um, uh, about to the tune of about four hundred thousand dollars in savings for the development community. Uh, we opened Luke Jensen uh, very very and we'll get into more detail on that. I think you wanted to talk about mm -hmm. that some more. Uh, we established the Discovery Clean Water Alliance, which is uh, in the north, in the middle part of the county, uh, will be for sewer, sewer delivery uh, okay. for that part of the county, which will uh, bring, hopefully bring jobs and prosperity there, more prosperity. Uh, the Southwest Regional Behavioral Health, RSN Regional Service Network, the whole providing of mental health services is now a not-for-profit corporation serving three counties, Clark, Skamania, and Cowlitz, and very proud of that. Commissioner Bolt was very instrumental in getting that done. Uh, our aging commission was established. Uh, we'll talk about that some more, I guess. Uh, we saved Lifeline, uh, our biggest drug and alcohol treatment provider, uh, by giving them a loan and getting them through a cash crunch. Um, and we refunded about 4.5. Uh, we refunded our uh, GO bonds for a savings of about 4.5 million, and we took that savings and mm -hmm. gave it back to the not-for-profits who occupy the Center for Community Health. So those were some of the some of the highlights this year. We're, we're, we're very pleased, a very busy year. Impressive. Thank you. Now, what were some of the biggest challenges you faced? Well, I think go right back to maintaining financial stability uh, with the slow economic growth. Uh, we have been giving our commissioners every periodic, I mean, mostly about every month to six weeks, periodic updates on where's the economy, uh, both nationally, and then how does that translate to the local level using you know, local economic indicators and taking our forecasts for revenue and expense and seeing how we are. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's proven very, very helpful, I think, to not only the board, but the elected officials and staff. That's uh, very well attended. Um, I think also the, we've, we're beginning more and more impacted by devolving, that is, federal and state programs that they're pushing down to our level mm -hmm. without any revenue, of course, that we have to, we have to maintain. That particularly hits us in the health department and, uh, social and the community services department where Medicaid, Medicare, Medicare and Medicaid rates have, have gone up or expenses have mm -hmm. gone up. Uh, and I think the other, the other one I think is that for me is the morale of our organization. Morale is it's very, very uh, difficult to maintain in, in, in slow economic times uh, where the recovery is slow, you know, the public criticism of public employees and government in general. Um, and, and people are tired. I mean, we're doing a lot more with a lot less and that begins to wear on people. Mm -hmm. But I try, to, I try to keep a happy face on, uh, on the organization because it's just a wonderful group of people. Uh, but those were the biggest challenges, basically ma maintaining our, stabil our financial stability uh, in the midst of, uh, you know, no new revenue. And we're just, we're going to be there and we're going to have to live with that. Well, let's get into more details sure. on some of these. So you, you were talking about the revenue how, right. with the economy. How, has, have you brought in what you expected? We did. We, the four, we hit our forecast right on the nose. We have, uh, our budget staff is an amazing uh, group of people. We've hit, I think we're within, I forget what tenth of one percent of hitting our forecast. Uh, we've had slow improvement in 12. We saw slow improvement. Uh, the housing market, building permits, uh, jobs have all eked up a bit, but challenges persist with the fragile local economy as well as the national trend. I mean, you got the U.S. the fiscal cliff or the fiscal um, cliff, as they called it, the crisis. The potential for state budget cuts uh, up to two billion again, uh, and then of course we got the European situation, and that will affect, could affect us eventually. So. You look out at that horizon. Why we hit our um, we hit our um, we hit our forecast, but um, 
you know, who knows what's going to happen. So uh, slow fiscal growth, that's what we're looking at, and that's what we've assumed, and that's what we've hit. Now, you, you discussed earlier that the Board of Commissioners had the opportunity to, to, to raise right. property tax mm -hmm. by 1%. But they chose not to. No. Why would they take that action? They haven't. They haven't done that in the last two years, and I think you're going to see that a pretty consistent pattern uh, with this board uh, and with the coming board. If I'm, uh, if I'm to guess, uh, they just didn't want to place any additional burdens on our citizens. I mean, everybody's going through this economy in, in different ways, but certainly it's it's not easy for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult time, and they just didn't feel that that was a the additional burden was appropriate. And what kind of impacts could that potentially have? Uh, well, one percent. We can only raise a one percent on the general fund and the road fund. Uh, the one percent on the general fund is about five hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. So that would have meant five hundred fifty thousand in two thousand thirteen, one point one million in two thousand fourteen because it compounds. Uh, but we didn't anticipate it in my budget. I did not put it in as a recommendation. Uh, but I think for thirteen fourteen we'll be fine. As you know, we have a two year budget, mm -hmm. a biennial budget. 13 and 14 will be fine. Uh, we've begun to measure our general fund fund balance by the number of days, operational days we have. And by the end of 13 and 14, 13 will be at about 67 days, and 60 is the optimum number, 60 days of operational money. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll start to drop to 56 days in 2014, and then it goes down precipitously after that. So while the 1% uh, tax increase would have given us a little more level um, uh, descent, um, or avoid it a little more uh, deep descent. Uh, what we're going to have to do is make that up with reconfiguration and not have a tax, I mean, we're not going to get a tax increase, so let's see how we can do operations. So uh, we didn't plan for it, uh, so we're, I think we'll be fine for the next two years at least. Okay. Job creation. Mm. Uh, let's talk about what steps did the county, st you mentioned one step was the fee holidays um, for economic development. Can you give us an update? Well, we um, we've uh, we have uh, uh, we don't create jobs necessarily in government. We do create infrastructure mm -hmm. that that will enhance job creation, uh, and we try to stay out of the way of reducing impediments to economic development. Uh, from the infrastructure side, obviously, as I mentioned, the Discovery Clean Water Alliance uh, will uh, provide a North County regional sewer system that over time will open up that entire area uh, for. Uh, new industrial development, and of course that means jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, and that's basically between, I think, probably the area of 219th Street uh, to, to Pioneer Street, and okay. that's right along I-5, the Discovery Corridor. Also, the Salmon Creek Interchange, you're going to start seeing the 139th overpass starting to go over I-5. Uh, oh, okay. All the I-5 work has been completed uh, now, but the Salmon Creek Interchange, $133 million investment uh, in our uh, economic development infrastructure, that'll be completed in 2014. So you'll start to see that creep across <laughs> I-5. And then the, uh, the board has started the process now of funding and improving and connecting the north and south legs of 10th Avenue, which will be a significant influx of jobs and connectivity with that road. And then the, um, the also it will provide for greater access to the fairgrounds complex, which means, of course, e easy in and out for the easier in and out for the amphitheater. So. Uh, those are from the infrastructure point of view. In terms of reducing impediments, we got fee, we continue to see holiday, as I said, four hundred thousand dollars to date this year in, in savings to the development community. Uh, we've improved the development code through the retooling our code process. We consolidated our zoning for job development lands called jo uh, called employment stream employment zone streamlining. Uh, we just finished that uh, last month. Uh, we're s with our CRDC. We're doing site certification program, which will make um, sites uh, the, uh, marketable and shovel ready mm -hmm. for people who want to come here and, and prosper. And then we've, we're implementing the lean permitting, the uh, ec lean ec uh, manufacturing principles. Uh, we're implementing that. Marty Snell is trying to implement that with our permitting process. We're just at the first stages of that. Uh, we continue to have good partnership with CREDC. Uh, we're, as you know, the, one of the large, with the city of Vancouver, the largest public member of CREDC. And we are, along with them, implementing the new economic development strategy uh, that has, was put in place about two years ago. So we're doing a lot. Well, with all these steps, any results? Have you seen the, the, the impacts? Well, I think you're thinking, again, things are recovering slowly, yes, but, but the, yes, there are. It, it's, reco it's recovering and it's coming back slowly. It's like, as I said, building permits are up a bit. 
uh, and that we're seeing a little more stability, and that's a good thing. Keep our fingers crossed. You betcha. Yeah. Uh, one of the potential impacts of local development is the uh, State of Department requirement that lo that newly developed land drain as slowly as it did prior to European settlement. Yeah, you know when that was, Jim? We, we, we weren't there. We no, no, I was not there. <laughs> Uh, the county has been appealing this process. Uh, can you give us an update? Sure. Well, actually, we we put uh, a different way to do that in our in our in our permit uh, with a um, with a agreed order with the Department of Ecology. Uh, that was um, um, appealed to the Pollution Control Hearings Board, and they found against us. We had found a different way to do it. They said, "No, you're not doing it." We appealed that. Uh, to the Court of Appeals. They upheld the hearings board, and so the board has directed us to go to the uh, state Supreme Court uh, for a hearing, and we're waiting for that now. And additionally, that the same people who um, appealed under um, the first rule have also sued us in U.S. District Court because it's a violation. They, they, they t contend a violation of the Clean Water Act, which is a federal law, and then that's why the U.S. District Court. So that's pending as well. But I'd, I'd like to make clear, though, er, any t at the at the outset of that appeal, we've begun to do all um, all of our uh, applications. We're complying with the pre-European condition um, uh, that was in the permit, the, the settlement standard. So we're okay. all of, we're processing that under that guise. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier the Luke Jensen yeah. Sports Park yeah. this summer. Amazing park. Can you kind of talk about what makes it so special? It, it, it's a very, very special place. And I, I go out there, uh, I've been out there two or three times uh, under construction and now and kind of watch the kids play and watch uh, what was, was available for the opening. $9.1 million multi-purpose facility for football, baseball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, and field hockey. Uh, it's, at, it's on uh, north side of 78th Street, uh, just uh, west of the St. John's intersection with 78th Street. Um, I guess I would, I'd call it, if I was to sum it up, a model of innovative design, public benefit, economic sensitivity, and uh, a host of community partnerships. Uh, we partner with, <coughs> excuse me, with Kingsway. Uh, they're putting in the soccer fields there. They're going to be able to use those fields, so we have the inter interchange with them. Um, uh, we have the um, Salmon Creek Little League. We have a contract with them. It's a beautiful park with uh, uh, public uh, viewing uh, on the field. It's since we put in uh, three of the five fields are AstroTurf, so they're not, so we don't have to fertilize and have that runoff. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, rain gardens to control stormwater. Yeah, it's, just a, it's just a really, really wonderful place. And it's a, it's a fitting, it was a fitting um, tribute to Luke Jensen, who was a young boy who attended Kingsway and who the park is named after who lost his battle with leukemia in, in May of 2010. But it's, uh, it's just got its first award. Uh, it was given the, um, the best sports complex of 2012 in Washington for communities our size by the Washington Recreations and Parks Association. So uh, the staff did a wonderful job with that place. And everybody, everybody who goes there just loves it. So I'm, I'm, and it's heavily, heavily used. Uh, so we're very pleased with the way it turned out. That's great. Um, speaking of parks, Camp Bonneville, work, yeah. work has resumed at Camp Bonneville. Can you give us an update? A wonderful future park, 3,500 acres in the, mid, in the mid, uh, midst of Clark County. Uh, it was used by the Army from 1909 to 1995 to train uh, soldiers in how to shoot weapons. And of course, they shot them all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in the midst of in the base realignment and closure process. We are in the midst of cleaning it up. We are in our second phase of that. We just hired Weston Solutions, uh, a large national firm, to do that. Uh, they've begun their phase one cleanup. Uh, they began in June, and they will be there for this phase up to 14, June of 14, uh, to do the valley floor cleanup. Uh, we're finding munitions from as long ago as World War I and as recently as Vietnam. Um, in various forms, uh, and it, m about three or four times what we thought we were going to find. Uh, nothing really um, very dangerous, but any kind of munition is, has, has danger with it, so we're being very cautious and using all the Army protocols, Department of Ecology, we have, we're under the auspices of their plan, so we're, al we're also working with the Department of Ecology. It's a good three-way three uh, partnership. It will take about seven more years uh, to clean it up to the way Ecology will sign off on it, we think. Um, but that's been a really good partnership. One of the new things we're doing out there is we started timber management. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the Army um, uh, managed that site for a number of years, uh, the timber. 
and hadn't been done for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we began that this year, and it's really been quite lucrative uh, in terms of, and as we planned in the plan, to use that revenue to help do the improvement, road improvement, bridge improvement, because you can imagine with the <coughs> lack of attention for years that th that really needs help. So uh, we're going to try to keep that as a self-perpetuating uh, fund to be able to do those kind of improvements. So things are, we've restarted the process and we're doing well, and hopefully by, uh, what do we say, 2020, let me make that 2020, uh, 20, <laughs> uh, that will be, a, it'll be a wonderful place for people to go. Okay. Well, we're quickly running out of time, so sure. we're going to skip ahead. You bet. Um, and the, the voters selected a new county commissioner, right. David Medore, mm -hmm. who will be replacing Commissioner Bolt in 2013. Right. Uh, how will you and the rest of this county staff um, help David Medore get used to the position and get oriented? Uh, I've met uh, Mr. Medore. Uh, we've had a number of meetings. He, is, uh, he just finished his Washington Association of County Training for new elected officials last week. He went up to Olympia, he and his wife, and um, he very, very much enjoyed the training. He felt it was very, very beneficial. Uh, he's begun introductory meetings with the department heads just to introduce himself and say uh, who he is and what he stands for. And those meetings have been very, very positive. I've gotten feedback so far. Um, uh, he, um, after his swearing in, will have in-depth orientation that will probably last a month with all the departments and elected officials, all the sites, all the property. Uh, so he's fully, fully briefed on, uh, on county government. Okay. Uh, what challenges do you see for the coming year as well as opportunities? Um, I think back to slow economic growth, uh, we, you know, government's kind of going what our, what our constituents want us to do, the slow economic growth and its impact and, it's on, and our ability to maintain the service levels because we're locked into a fiscal um, um, kind of structure. Our deficit structure is an uh, is ongoing deficit posture, so we have to work uh, to keep that going. Uh, it'll be a, the challenge will be, the constant challenge we'll face a local government it really provides us the opportunity, though, to show our citizens that we are earnest in finding better ways to serve them uh, and stay within our means. And that's what that reconfiguration process is all about. 13 and 14 will be the coup de grace of that, to be able to bend that cost curve down so that we're, our revenue equals our expenses and we can sustain that without tax increases, without cuts, but to do services in a, big, in a better way. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like the, the viewers to know about county government? Well, like I always say at the end, Jim, and when we, when we have these good talks, is that I think citizens need to know that their county government is in very good hands. It's staffed by a group of diverse, talented, and really, really dedicated elected and appointed officials who uh, are doing their very best to keep Clark County the very best place, uh, most livable place in America, and we're very proud of that. Well, thank you very much, and happy holidays. Same to you, Jim. Thank you.